This is Steve Hanley. And this is Luke George. So Luke, now, did you watch the EA press conference last year during E3? Uh, I caught it, but uh, it honestly wasn't that memorable for me. It, it, was, a, it was a good seven, eight hours long. It was pretty short by uh, EA standards, but they devoted a good, well, they devoted like three hours to having Pele on stage, but they devoted a good two hours for Unravel, which, which was a big surprise because EA is known for, of course, EA Sports, Mass Effect, major games, Titanfall. And they, when you think of an indie game, you don't really think of EA first. In fact, you think of EA last. So when, when they announced Unravel on the stage, it got a lot of attention. And more still, you had an adorable man up there who was just like trembling uh, because that's probably the biggest stage he's ever been on. So he kind of lit up the internet by, by on fire, took it by storm. Now, it has not been that long since E3 has happened. We're looking at about six months, maybe seven, and Unravel is now on the market. It's released. You have played quite a bit of this game, though. You played it a few months ago at Coldwind Interactive, and now you've experienced the entire game in full. So first of all, is this a legitimate indie game, or is it more of a big company trying to make an indie game? Uh, I think it it's a bit of a mix of both. Uh... I mean, it's it's definitely a small studio doing their own thing, uh, but I think I think they've gotten uh, a lot of the resources from EA and uh, and they, they've really had a chance to do what they wanted and and really put uh, as much time as they needed into it. Uh, I think Martin said a few times uh, he's the creative director. He, he said a few times that. Uh, EA's really just made it possible for them to do whatever they wanted, and uh, and yeah, so it's I I, feel, I really feel like it's kind of a mesh of both. Uh, it's it's a big company supporting an indie developer, if that makes sense. Now, one thing that Martin always made sure to voice was that Yarny, which is the the yarn based, I don't know if he's a, a creature, not a monster, of course, but um, what what is he exactly? Actually, that's a good question. Is how, how does he come to life? What, what is the backstory of that character? Yeah, it's funny. The, the game actually never really shows the, the transformation, hmm. so to speak. Yeah. All you see is uh, a ball of yarn kind of falling out of the basket and bouncing down the stairs and rolling into the shadows, and then out comes this little red yarn thing. Uh, I, I guess he's more like an embodiment than anything else, kind of, of whatever you want him to be, whatever feeling or emotion that you that you take along with you when you play the game. Yeah. Interesting. So there's no there's no like backstory where he's like you know like child whose you know consciousness got transported to into the yarn ball <laughs> once he drowned in the lake in the woods or something. It's just a very uh, up to the uh, interpretation of the player sort of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And one thing that Martin always pushed was the fact that I think the story is because because Coldwood Interactive, which is based in Sweden, your your native country, by the way, for anyone listening. Um, so I think <laughs> yeah. you sh you share some creative. Uh, okay, not your native country, but your your adopted country, I should say. Um, so they really kind of wanted to emphasize the fact that Martin. Coldwood wasn't doing that well. I think they were making some like kind of generic snowboard games, and I think there was some layoffs or something. And he, right, he went on a camping trip with his family in the woods, and he just kind of yeah. randomly came up with this with this character. Did you, did you find that that to be true? That this is really kind of the creation, at least the Yarny character uh, of one man. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I talked to a few of the guys there, and uh, it was it was kind of Martin's concept and then he he brought it back to the to the studio after that trip and uh they all kind of just just clicked with it and from there it was kind of a collective thing and they all uh i i mean i mean it's really not a hard concept to grasp this little red dude and he's in the world and you want him to be uh interacting with memories and it, it wants to feel like home and for all these guys uh they could kind of take him and and put him into their uh, their lives pretty easily, and and so I think that translated pretty quickly and easily as a 
as a group development, if that made any sense whatsoever. So would you say that overall the game really feels like a labor of love? Oh man, from from the time you start it, uh, there's there's a little message from the developer uh, kind of saying, you know, here it is. This is this game that we made, and we love it, and it's it's got all of our hearts in it, and uh, finally, you know, you can play. It. And it, from from that point, it's it's cute as uh, and pretty heartwarming. Hmm. Uh, so is it a, is it overall a positive message that the game sends, or is it one that kind of gets? Because I've heard some people say the game can be uh, quite dark at times. Yeah, well, um, it it it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like it it, it journeys into some some pretty heavy uh, concepts. You know, um, it it really it really covers loss and and. The, the journey through time that you take and yeah it, it it really feels yeah it's 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 sad at times it's it's straight up sad at times and it it's really easy to empathize with that with that sadness because you know we've all had relatives that have passed away or we've all done something that maybe we didn't uh, that we might regret or and uh, it, it really it really triggers that in whoever's playing it. So is there any sort of story going on? Are there cutscenes or is it just kind of, do you kind of interpret what's going on for yourself? Uh, there's definitely there's definitely the story of uh, the old woman in the, in the first cutscene. Uh, it, it never really details that this is what's happening. My interpretation was that he's piecing together her memories um, and kind of looking back at her life um, but uh, again that could be interpreted uh, in a different way I think it'd be easy to say that um, maybe it was her creation and then he's gone off and discovered all these memories of other people or but yeah it, it never really says you know this is what this game is go follow this path and uncover this person's stuff and do this thing it's uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty open in that aspect. So, what kind of a genre would you say that the game falls into? Is it is it more of a straight up platformer? Yeah, um, I think the puzzles, while they're pretty original and 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 well done, I really didn't ever feel like they were the focus of the game. Um, it's funny, I. I was thinking about this when I was writing the review, and I wouldn't want to just say it's a puzzle platformer. It feels like there has to be something else added on there. Um, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time you're puzzling or platforming, but it really doesn't seem like the achievement that Unravel has reached is a puzzling or platforming one. It's, uh, I really feel that it should be judged for <laughs> this other thing that you need to add on to that, uh, which I, I couldn't quite work out what it was. Not that it's a bad puzzle or, or a bad platformer, it's it's exceptional in both of those areas. It's just this other facet of the game is what makes it really a really worthwhile experience. So what kind of longevity are we talking about? Is, is this more of a typical indie game that doesn't last too long, or is it a, like a full-fledged 15 to 20 hour platformer? Uh... I, I seem to go through it pretty quickly. Uh, I think it was about six to seven hours. Okay. Um, and then maybe another couple hours going back and looking for collectibles. Um, but uh, I, I know that some people don't quite get the puzzles as quickly or they might have some trouble with the platforming. Um, uh, so ev everyone I think might be a bit different, but I'd say it's it's probably about six to 12 hours depending on uh, how you go with puzzling and or platforming. Is there a lot of incentive to go back and, and try to find all those collectibles? For me there definitely was. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the the gameplay itself. Um, Yanni kind of moves about in a pretty a pretty cool way. It's, it's quite distinct. He's uh, a little bit uncoordinated but 
he can do some pretty cool stuff with his yarn that he can swing off and bounce off and throw around the place. <laughs> um, so so it's, at times it's it's an absolute joy to kind of just move around the environment and fling yourself off things and, and see if you can get to a certain platform. And so, yeah, like uh, from that angle, it, yeah, definitely incentive to go back. And then uh, when you're out of the levels and you're in the kind of hub, which is this old lady's cottage, uh, you can see the pictures that represent each level. And there'll be little uh, missing spots where you haven't found certain collectibles. And, and for me, that it's like an obsessive compulsive thing. I need to fill that. <laughs> so. <laughs> sure. And, and, and that's good because a lot of gamers these days, they really want a game where there's stuff to do that's not the main quest. They want to actually do, just get 100% completion. Yeah, well, it, it's funny. I've never, I've never had that with achievements and trophies and stuff like that but for some reason seeing seeing it represented in the game i was like oh man gotta get that little batch thing sure. <laughs> stick it on the trip so I, I think i think the thing that jumped out at most people first about this game well besides how adorable martin was which i think everyone can agree he, he is and was is the fact that it has a very unique art style now people have, have of course compared it to limbo or Little Big Planet, but it really kind of takes its own form. It it really represents a, a realistic take on the environment, uh, big and small. Is was that a, a thing you were impressed with in the game? Was the visuals? Uh absolutely blown away. Mm. Uh, they've literally just taken Sweden and put it in this <laughs> in this game. It's insane how accurate it is. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've spent a lot of the time in the mountains and on rivers and things like that since I've been here. Sure. Um, like canoeing up rivers and, and things like that. And this game, like, I almost feel like, hey, is this, like, is this bit from that place that I went? Like, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and the cottages and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just insanely true to life. Uh, that was something that really blew me away. Um, and the guys at the studio that like it, they were saying one of the reasons it feels so authentic is because they've literally they've gone into their backyard and gone oh i'll put that in the game i mean i in that the old lady's cottage something i noticed in the background i was uh, when i first played it was oh there's like a there's a hatch and uh, martin was watching me play it and i said hey can i do anything with that because i just picked it up and was still working things out and he said no no he said but you know um and he said that's this guy from the studio's beer cellar like, <laughs> put it in the game like, okay, I, obviously i wanted to go there even more but uh yeah unfortunately i couldn't but like they've literally just taken aspects of their own lives and just dumped it into this game uh, in really awesome ways so what you're saying basically is that sweden is a beautiful place yeah, it is incredibly beautiful. <laughs> so, besides the visual aspect, what kind of a soundtrack are we talking about? Is it orchestrated music? Is there even a soundtrack? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of violin music. They got some local musicians to uh, do all of the music, as far as I know. Um, and the music is really fitting, actually. It's it's part of what uh, really gets the, the feels going, uh, whether it's you know, like a happy, uplifting sound as you're floating with a kite or when you're heading into the depths of this railway and there's machines everywhere, it, it can get quite, um, it, it really builds the tension and the, the kind of uh, fervor that really helps with the game. Um, yeah, the music is, is really, really excellent. So after experiencing Unravel, would you say that this game is the kind of direction you'd like to see Coldwood take in the future, and more importantly, EA take in the future? Yeah, well, it, it's so different to anything that EA have done before, yeah. at least uh, to my knowledge. And uh, likewise for Coldwood, uh, you look at their, their past catalogue and it's um, uh, <laughs> the art direction, uh, chief of art direction, Dick Adolfson, he was saying that uh, he literally called them sellout games. Uh, they're ski it's racing honest. games. 
yeah uh, and all of these guys that's that's something that's really cool about them is they're they're so honest and genuine but um yeah like i think their last game was like a uh like a wii fighting game well not a sorry a playstation move fighting game you know with the motion controller um and to go from that to this it's just such a contrast and it it's really turned out well so yeah for sure I'd, I'd love them to keep going in this direction um i'm really interested to see what they have planned if anything and uh, where, where they go next well that's fantastic unravel is of course available now for playstation 4 xbox one and pc it's a digital game so unfortunately you won't be able to go get a adorable yarny box art at gamestop but i think luke it's still worthwhile even for the big collectors out there to pick up this game digitally most definitely. Well, you can go read our Unravel review right now on hardcreamer.com. But Luke, thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you.